Tenko Hacks, a podcast about wellness, health, and biohacking. Great speaking to you, and I'm really excited to talking about about your company and um, the solution. Clear, is it clear? Dot or how do you how do you pronounce your your company and the product correctly? Yes, it's clear. The company is called Clear. You can find it at clear.bio. And, uh, clear.bio. Yeah, and it's all about the precision nutrition. Exactly. So you have a very solid, long years of experience in data business, creating businesses with data. Uh, what got you interested in health and specifically precision nutrition? I can tell you about it, Eva. Uh, that, I think that's a good summary uh, because indeed uh, I have a PhD in chemistry and physics. I started my career a long time ago at Unilever, uh, but I discovered uh, uh, startups like 10, 15 years ago. And uh, I really like to build data intensive businesses. So go back 15 years ago. Uh, uh, it is quite logical in which industry that happened. It was all about online advertising. Right? These were the first industries hit by, by digitization and personalization. Um, and uh, um, if you think about it, uh, you know, then comes difficult uh, industries that are a bit difficult, like, like, like fintech, you know, that's regulated, that's banking, etc. So which industries come at last, do you think? Health. Health, yeah. They're the most in difficult industries to innovate. Why? Because the payer is not the user, is not the prescriber, is not the insurer. You know, there are so many parties. It's highly regulated, etc. So this is why everybody who's, who's starting with digitization, personalization, starts in in online, uh, uh, in uh, online booking, in online advertising, etc. Because you know, this was straightforward. This was a straightforward way. So now comes the, the most difficult industries, and I turned 50 a few years ago, and I thought, okay, you know, I've, I've had two exits before, uh, but when, where am I going to spend the rest of my life on, right? It has to do with something that doesn't improve the life of an advertiser or a bank, but has to do with improving the life of, of many million people around the world. And we, we can, so I was very much, I'm a scientist, uh, um, and an entrepreneur, but but I knew that we, with the current status of science, we can improve the lives of people. You know, we can slow down or stop biological aging. So I was fascinated about that topic, and uh, and it's a bit of a uh, and then came out clear that was a bit of a coincidence. And and but this is how how startups start. You know, they come from from the place where you don't expect them to. Start. Absolutely. And you, why continuous glucose monitoring? Because my question comes from, is it because that kind of data is available um, on an at-home kind of continuous monitoring basis? Or did you have some specific reason why glucose? Because there are lots of things, blood markers that you can, you can measure and use. Yes, you for can, me you can measure many, many things. Um, if you are a nerd, you measure, you do measure many things, right? Our first, our first participants were uh, uh, biohackers. They measured uh, seventy things around on their body. Right. <laughs> the thing is that we are, we want to make something that uh, hits uh, main, is that is a mainstream consumer application, so that everybody actually can use. And uh, well, let me take a twenty-three and me. You know, everybody knows that. You know, you can send your 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 DNA sample, and and a great analysis comes out. But most of these analyses, you can send your stool sample and you get an analysis of your microbiome. But most of these things are very complicated. You know, you actually need a kind of a PhD to understand what it all says about your body. And, and we want to make a product that's, that's, uh, that hits consumer market in a very simple way. You know, you get an app at 5, uh, 5 p.m. saying, hey, Eva, uh, your calorie balance today has been so much and so much. You've been burned so much. You've been eating so much. You, we know you're not going to exercise tonight. We know your personal diet, so we know what you should eat and you should not eat. So this is what we actually recommend to you. So, um, so we can, it, you know, the, you're right. You can take many, many other angles to it, but none of them are, are actually uh, actionable, I could say. Besides of personal glucometry, their little applications are really actionable and have a lot of explanatory power. Right. Right. Your, yeah. heart, your heart rate is real time and has explanatory power you know your heart rate variability is interesting for sleep and for stress but we want to target people that eat and everybody eats 
right? So, yes. so we want to be able to improve the lives of people that, that suffer uh, diabetes, that suffer obesity, that suffer Western welfare disease. Yeah, that uh, and that's a great introduction. I think the grand transition period to um, to uh, your product, so Korea uh, Precision Nutrition Solution, which is based on blood glucose, continuous blood glucose monitoring. Yep. So, as myself, um, I I also have worn um, previously a continu continuous glucose monitor. It is uh, it was Dexcom G6, G6. Yep. and um, well, what is so could you please introduce clear solution, basically, because I think it's so much more than just a plain old um, glucose, blood glucose monitoring, right? It is, it is, it, is, it absolutely is. So, so uh, glucose monitoring produces on a continuous basis your blood sugar levels, right? That's what they do. Right. Um, that's still quite complicated. If you, ha if you are a diabetes patient or if you're a biohacker, you've tried it before, and you know you may be able to handle it. What we do is the following: we translate all those continuous data into food recommendations. So how does that work? Uh, you wear a sensor for two weeks. By the way, now we're talking sensors. Eh? The sensor is on the back of your arm. In two right. one, two years' time, we're talking smartwatches. Eh? So mm -hmm. so we have to think through the clouds and see what's going to happen there. You know, heart yeah. rate heart rate variability was not available ten years ago. And now people improve their sleep based on it uh, with food, for example. Absolutely. So, uh, so this glucose, uh, continuous glucose signal will come uh, will come through in a um, uh, in smartwatch. Uh, but back to your question, um, uh, what happens in the Clear program is that for two weeks you measure your blood sugar continuously and you actually uh, log all the foods that you eat. So you make a picture. You tell us, you scan the barcode, you tell us what ingredients are in it, and we combine those two signals. And on a, on a near time basis, we can say to you, okay, listen, uh, Eva, you just, uh, for example, I have here a, a nice lunch salad, right? I can scan the barcode, uh, it's in clear, I can eat it, and within two hours, I can see based on my response of my blood sugar if this is actually a lunch that I should eat or not. Mm -hmm. And this is how we build up our intelligence and recommendations. And this is the big, I can tell you, this is the big unknown in, in, in uh, nutrition. Uh, because on my macronutrient level and on micronutrient level, we know what to eat. And uh, we know how to balance the diet. If you, you should eat protein rich, you can do intermittent fasting, etc. But on a personal level, it's impossible to know if this salad would work for me or for you. Yeah. Right? Because the way we react to food is, is personal. Your DNA, your microbiome, and your lifestyle is so different uh, and so particular that it's very hard to predict in advance. We know all the studies, and but none of them are, are actually conclusive. Yeah. And that's what interests me so much about this. Clear interests me so much. So because there's data, that's one thing. But there's interpretation of the data, yes. and that's totally another thing. And yes. as you say, um, depending on the biomarkers, HR, uh, HRV or glucose uh, values, the interpretation can be so complex so that you have to maybe consult your doctor or even doc like functional doctor. It's and it is a very complex area. And your solution basically is providing. Not only the data, but interpretation, interpretation. in a interpretation in a in the form of personal recommendation. Yes. Um, hence, um, precise nutrition. Hundred percent. Yeah, and that's that's um that's really fascinating. Could you maybe walk through a little bit more end user experience kind of thing? So when I was wearing my Dexcom, I would basically get um, there was actually three parts or maybe two parts. Uh, so my mobile phone, which is an app, and then um, sensor, and then there was a transmitter as well. Does transmitter also needed for your solution or just sensor? No, it's not, it's not. So It's, uh, it's just uh, a sensor. Yes, so you, you had a good question. Walk me through uh, your customer journey. Yes. So I will do that. Uh, so the, the, the first thing is that you have a good reason to join the program. Either you want to optimize your energy, you want to manage your weight, either you have a metabolic disorder and you want to get rid of that, you have a Western welfare disease like obesity, etc., and you want to work on that. Um, so next thing is you get our package home. You know, this is starting package where you get all the information. Uh, so I'm opening it up. Actually, there's a good uh, way. Uh, uh, there's a good manual how to start with the program. You download our app, and um, there's the whole onboarding, um, uh, the whole onboarding um, 
description actually. And that tells you how to place the sensor and get the program started. So the sensor is a, uh, is a, is a very tiny little thing that you place on the back of your arm. It looks like this. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's all. This works for two weeks. You can swim with it. You can lay on the beach. Don't dive too deep and don't get into a sauna. But for the rest, it's pretty mainstream, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, uh, and we help you place this on the right spot. It should be on the back of your arm, etc. Right. This thing uh, communicates for two weeks with your app. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, every time you eat something, so this is me eating a salad, I take a picture, I scan the barcode, and this is where the interpretation starts. Mm -hmm. So every time you log a meal or a drink or a snack or a vitamin or an exercise, after that, we give you immediate uh, feedback about how this actually scores. And the score is very simple. It's either one, uh, sorry, it's either zero or it's 100 or somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. And 100 is a great score. That, and, and actually, this is where our algorithm says, you can eat this every day. And um, so this is actually how you build up your favorite, uh, your favorite meal sets. Uh, so right. in our app, this is what you do. Every time you get something, uh, a recommend, uh, well, sorry, an analysis in, from our side, so suppose this is 80, that's pretty good. Uh, so I can take this lunch every day if I want. So I build my own meal plans. So at the end of these two weeks, you have all your favorite meal plans set. You can say you have a set of favorite snacks, of, of, uh, of uh, favorite meal plans for a, an exercise day, for a relaxation day, etc. Now in the meantime, I'm still uh, talking about the customer experience. In the meantime, you have questions uh, like, how can it be that this salad is good for me, but not for my husband? Mm. Or how can it be that I had a hypo last night, which is a very low blood sugar level, uh, and is that dangerous, right? So for that, you're in continuous uh, contact with our coach. So behind mm -hmm. Clear is continuously coaching on nutritional aspects. So we help you on every aspect. We can say, okay, if in this salad you would add a bit more this, then probably it would be better for you. Or if you replace ingredient X with Y, it's better for you, right? Do you mean kind of like a real person kind of support? Yes, so you can contact person. and you will be talking to a real person. As a real person, actually. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so this is how the, the, the customer experience goes. So after these two weeks, you have a few uh, meal plans that help you through the day. And uh, for me, I know now exactly what to eat to have energy from 8 in the morning to 8 o'clock at night, which is great. Mm -hmm. I'm an entrepreneur. I have to be on all the time. I don't have yeah. to snack. I know what to eat, right? Others lose weight. Others, like diabetes patients, some of them are able to reduce their medication. You know, this is really spectacular. And, and obviously, uh, well, I, I know that your question is still about the customer journey, but obviously we all know that food, <laughs> that food is a great causer, right? Of, of Western welfare diseases. But now yeah. we can track back what is actually causing it, right, on a personal level. And this is how we help people. So people come back after a week or two, or sometimes after a month or two, their diet has changed, they have other questions to our dietitians, they want to recalibrate their set, etc. Yeah, so that is um, all very fascinating. Um, back so a couple of very basic questions. Besides the recommendations as an as a user, do, am I also seeing the raw data? Because some biohackers, are, you know, they are like yes. data geeks and they just want to see them. Of course, it's your data. It's nobody else. Right. We don't share it <laughs> right. with anybody else except our own new, uh, nutritionist. So yes, you can have the raw data. You can have, uh, yes, yes, the answer is yes. Great. And another question is, so my experience is that it's really complex, this glucose monitoring thing, because um, at least I responded to different foods, of course, yes, but also different times. So I'm from Japan, so I also eat I, I eat rice, right? And one of the very shocking truths to me was that even though I come from Japan and I thought rice is such a healthy food for me, it was the opposite. It yeah. raises my blood glucose like crazy. And but it also depended on the time of the day. Yes. If it was in the morning, it was okay. But late evening or after lunchtime, I I shouldn't probably be eating rice, even though I come from I'm 100% I'm Japanese gene, gene wise. So um, how does does that clear take into account, or does clear take into account this kind of complexity because there are, this is so multi-dimensional? And you yeah. mentioned the exercise, and of course the exercise. Yeah you know, makes you more insulin sensitive temporarily. Yes, yes. Eva, I'm sorry for you that rice has scored so, so low <laughs> on you. your list. I'm 
<laughs> I'm so shocked. <laughs> it is a shock. It is a shock. But this is, this is, no, but this is exactly where we, where we as a population are shocked. You know, the, what they call the glycemic index. So they, the, this is the index. This is the way how your body responds to foods. And we always thought that glycemic index was a property of food. So there's good and bad, but actually it's not. You know, glycemic index is a property of you. So this mm. for why for everything you eat, you have to categorize it actually if it's good or not. So, um, and this, uh, uh, thanks for pointing it out, Ita, because this is very complex. So, uh, you are right, you know, there's a distinction between exogenous and endogenous glucose. Mm -hmm. So, endogenous glucose is the glucose that your body produces because you have stress, you have to exercise, etc. You can have mm. a peak in your blood sugar just because you watch a uh, horror movie, right? Because you right. have stress, because you have sex, uh, anything can happen uh, with your body uh, where your body says, hey, I need some glucose, so let's produce it, which is actually not a bad thing, right? It's in, it's in, your, uh, 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 in your fat storage, so that's good. Endogenous glucose peaks, we're not, uh, we're not concerned about that. So this is what we do indeed in our algorithm. We filter out the endogenous glucose. The exogenous mm. glucose is the glucose that comes from outside. And of course, you need some fuel to fuel your body, but not too much. Right? And, and, and the reason for that is that in your body, there is this delicate system which you could compare with an air conditioning. And the, best, the best temperature for you to work at this moment would be like between 18 and let's say 21 degrees centigrade. And in your body, your best uh, glucose level is around 5 millimole per liter, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and it shouldn't be two because then you die and it shouldn't be above 20 because you get into problems with that. Right. So uh, your air conditioning, internal air conditioning does that very well. The thing is, if you, in your case, would eat rice too much, you would actually, it's the same as having the air conditioning on with the front door open. Mm. So your body keeps on working a, a towards that five millimole per liter. The only thing is the front door is open. So the, what, what do you get? You get, uh, uh, High peaks, and then the air conditioning overproduces, so then you get deep gaps. This is a hypo where you get food comas or food cravings, right? Which is strange, you just have to eat something. Um, the other thing which you get is that uh, if you do this for 10 years, the air conditioning just breaks down. Mm. This is when you get diabetes too. This is diabetes too, right? Yeah. Uh, so, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I know this is a podcast, and and uh, uh, and and we we are free to share many many uh, many ideas, etc. But your question is, does the uh, algorithm of Clear take into account all those complexities? And the answer is yes. Uh, this is the added value we give above just you reading data. We help you yeah. to interpret. So it's correct that you say that sometimes people have another reaction to to rice in the morning than in the afternoon. That's correct. You know, sometimes women have another reaction depending on their cycle. That's correct. And we take all those things into account to filter out exactly what you should what what, what you should be eating. Yeah, that's the power of the AI, I guess, the AI. pattern recognition. And that's something we cannot do, basically. I mean, doctors probably cannot do it, it, yeah. it because it's where machine power is yes. so much useful. Um, I, I, just for the clarification for myself, when you say endogenous glucose that's yeah. basically cortisol based response right as am i understanding correctly because you mentioned like horror movie and and i i understand that, that those in those cases the glucose response can happen because of the cortisol because you're releasing cortisol and that in turn raises your so your blood glucose that's yes, what you're yes. talking so the, about the, the, yeah. the thing is your body has indeed uh, gives signals to produce fuel you have to run for a train you know forget the horror movie but you have to run for a train you have to present you have to, well, yeah, you know, and this is indeed where your body raises internally the blood sugar level just because you should be ready for action, right? Yeah. And so uh, just going back to this user experience, um, I watched some of your previous um, interviews um, and you talked about program and starting every Monday. Is it still so that you, you, you have people, because it sounded in that those interviews that there was like, um, people en entering to a mm. weekly program 
and continuing two weeks and or is it most how how is it does it work how, how um, does it work at the moment yeah what you saw was a pre-corona uh thing pre-corona <laughs> version right <laughs> and actually you're right because this is a, a nice building where we're actually uh, this is a, work, a big workspace and every monday we had a group of 20 about 20 people that came in at 7 uh, p.m in the evening and we we helped them uh we they started the program together they didn't know each other sometimes they were friends etc but most of the time they were uh, and we helped them install the sensor and uh, and actually explain everything that i'm explaining to you now but then came corona so then we switched uh, to a completely digital proposition so you now get our uh, our starting box sent at home uh, and you can start whenever you want and that works perfectly so uh so, so this is indeed what what happened. I enjoyed the, the the Monday evening meetings, by the way, because this is where you actually see your participants live. Uh, we had a we had an Olympic uh, sporter on the program. Uh, we had somebody who had severe diabetes with risk of losing her leg, etc. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's it's everybody that you can help is actually sitting just in front of you. So it was a good yeah. time. It was a good time. But, uh, yeah, there definitely is um, pros and cons of um, this interacting directly in fa face to face. Indeed. And but for um, because I'm based in Sweden, um, yeah. for for people like who are outside Amsterdam where you are based in, uh, it also sounds like so. It brings me to the question of availability. Is yep. your solution available to everyone in in Netherlands? I guess, but um, beyond that, um, how is the availability of your um, solution? Europe. Europe, Europe, US, and South Africa at the moment. Okay, so it is basically global, almost globally, except yes. Asia. I think we can say. For the moment, and yes. yeah, and that is, um, so, and you mentioned personal support previously. Yep. Yep. Is it like how does it work if you are based in the very different time zones? Is it yep. like um, we support you? Can... We we support well. We don't support you day and night, but we we support you during office hours. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So, so, so that works. I must be honest. You know, uh, 80, 90 percent comes out of the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. uh, there's quite some interest outside, so people outside use it as well. Outside the Netherlands uh, use it as well. Um, and we're startups, you know. So that means that that the real international proposition is going to be launched by the first of January, 2022. Mm -hmm. So in four year, four months time. And I'll tell you a bit about why. Uh, what the real international proposition is. Now I'm saying, you know, everybody's welcome. Just, you know, step in, uh, try it, we'll help you, and we learn a bit from you, uh, you as well. What we're gonna launch by the 1st of January is um, a localized food database. So you are in Japan, you join us, you log your Japanese foods, and we can give you, based on uh, all kinds of different peer group analysis, we can give you recommendations which are actually very accurate, like 80% accurate, sometimes 90, mm -hmm. what you should eat after the program. Okay, so you're in our program for two weeks, look at this as a calibration period, and after that, we can uh, recommend you for at least two months with high ac accuracy what you should eat. Right? And this is our international proposition. So we have to have international food databases with international peer groups, etc. And now behind the screens, we're working on that. Because if I tell you, you know, our product vision is that, that you get this, uh, this little app at 5 p.m., which exactly tells you what you should eat that night. And if you don't like it, you swipe to the next one, and you swipe to the next one. It's 100% uh, contextual, meaning that we understand what you're going to do tonight. And it's also 100% personalized. So that means that you get it and nobody else. What we also want to do is make sure that those recipes, those are shoppable recipes. So you get recipes, shopping lists, but you get also the possibility to order it and to have it delivered at your doorstep. Right? Spotify and Netflix are telling you what you should look and what you should listen to, and we're just telling mm -hmm. you what you should eat. That's powerful. That's a, very powerful. Tesla drives around with over a thousand sensors, and we don't have just one. Right. So you see how we put our AI and our technology to work for cars, for entertainment, and you know the next one up is health. <laughs> so. That is a very powerful, powerful um, proposition and statement, and I feel so excited um, about this myself um, because health for me is actually you know the first thing, first um, area of innovation should be in of my course. opinion. But uh, that's all, that's all because I'm I'm a self um, programmed biohacker. Um, and I'm so excited to hear that the company like yours is um, really getting us there and 
maybe quick quick as um you mentioned like in January next year. Yep. It's it's coming soon. It's just in three months. So yep. that it's happening so soon, and that's um that's really exciting. And one another thing which got me excited to contact you really that is that you are a European company because this health optimization the sphere it's it it is quite American or North America dominated, and sometimes um, I. I I actually really prefer to diversify my mm. my podcast episodes. I mm. really want to speak to companies from Europe, Asia, and other parts of the world as well, because I think diversity is really the key for, you know, the best optimization. You, you don't, you, you know, you, you take off the bias which can result from the dominating uh, geography or whatever that is. Yep. So I'm so excited that you are based in Netherlands and um, and um, yeah. And, um, yeah, with so, big innovations, and... you know, uh, the, the country is quite known for quite some, some some big innovations. We started here just because this is where I live, but also because <laughs> there's a, a a very tight ecosystem for these kind of innovations. Huh? Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, innovating in healthcare is like as I was. Uh, we started the conversation with is traditionally very very difficult, but the ecosystem is small. Uh, uh, it's well, it's it's highly connected. Let me say that. As in, in the Netherlands. So we won the Healthcare Innovation Award earlier this year. Uh, uh, we're on a track now to get clear reimbursed by health insurance, which makes sense. Uh, yeah. Because it improves your health. And um, so, but that, that means some innovation at the, at the side of the health insurer as well, uh, because here we're not talking about health insurance, but health assurance, right? So people are actually joining us to uh, prevent them from developing diseases, uh, and I'm uh, we're currently in an ecosystem that that, uh, that 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 in which we can produce that innovation. It's it's not just an app sending a text message to you, right? It's a supply chain where we have the right smartwatches if you want, the right sensors when we have the right uh, clinical evidence, where we have the right um, uh, health insurer to back us up, and the partnerships with the retailer, right, or with Gorilla. Yeah, we want people to be, to be, to, you know, they have less time, less education, less means or money to decide. So, do we want uh, 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 to watch these populations get ill? No, we want to help them, right? And it's yeah. just by getting a small text message, and you are able to order your stuff and have it delivered at your doorstep. This is how it works. Absolutely, um, sounds uh, really fascinating. Um, just a couple of more practical questions from because I really want people to get the picture of what yep. they if they, if they get interested yep. to to the, try your sub. I know that there are two models, right? You, you can you can try once, so it's for two weeks, yep. or you can do two weeks per month. Um, I do know that two weeks is usually that's the way, how how the sensor lasts, right? Because it was so with Dexcom as well. Um, but other than that, is there any reason why you, you have like two weeks or half of a month wearing the sensor and then, then the, the other when you don't have to wear the sensor? Is there any rational behind that, that, um, that uh, solution? I would say so. Uh, so our, um, let's say, uh, the end game for us is not that you have to use the sensor and scan your foods and log your foods all the time. Uh, so uh, our desired end state is actually that you are using clear as you are using Spotify. You know, what should I eat tonight? What should I eat next morning? Do I have a? Can I have a recipe? Can I have a shopping list, etc. So it's your uh, and the the only way we can give you these smart recommendations that are fully personalized is if you join us two weeks in this program where you measure uh, if you use us during that calibration period let's say so we've trained our algorithms such that after two weeks of calibration we can sustain two to three months of uh, of recommendations for you huh? so uh, so we'd like to you to to uh, to be on a let's say on a subscription model with clear where you don't wear that sensor all the time you just use it because uh, you're in uh, a supermarket you scan the barcode you just want to know is it good for me or not you know and by the 1st of January, all those features are in. So this is why we make a distinction between people that say, hey, I just want to try it out, which is try, and people that say, no, 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 I want, on a, I want to be on a subscription model because I want that support all the time. I want mm -hmm. to be connected to your nutritionist all the time. I want to have those recommendations all the time. And then you're on a subscription model. And, and every now and then we say, hey, listen, you should recalibrate yourself because, because 
uh, you know, uh, there's a few reasons for that. First, people's diets change uh, during the, with the seasons. Eh? In some countries, diets change more than in others, but, but typically here in the west of Europe, people eat other things in the winter than in the summer. Right. Uh, you're like a walking bioreactor. That means that if your diet changes, your microbiome changes as well, which means that your response to food changes. And that's one of the reasons why people with overweight are actually um, a bit in, in uh, how do you say that, uh, in trouble because their microbiome is over efficient. So when you start eating other things after six to eight weeks, you have the first changes in microbiome, and after six months, you have the real change in microbiome, so that you actually uh, are less prone to to obesity. Mm. So I'm, I think I'm just telling you that uh, that we have people that uh, just want to try the program and learn from it and uh, it's sufficient, but others, uh, they stay on the program and they want to be supported day in, day out. And that's what we offer as well. Yeah, I understand that very well. I at, oh, I can I can imagine that the, the feeling. Um, for me, when I was wearing, so I, I didn't wear Dexcom all the time either, actually, no. um, when I think about it, because it, even though it's because it was just costly for me because I'm not, uh, it's not covered by insurance or anything. So and I was like that going to the dark market or black market and just buy it. So, so, um, um, but during the two weeks, and I understood that two weeks is actually more than enough for your, your AI to learn the yep. pattern of yep. the, so, um, and even just without the clear personal precision nutrition part, two weeks, I felt was very good. You, I think very good period to get the insight, which wasn't available for me before. And as I said, there are so many surprises, at least for me. And when I like hear around, I think many people who, who try continuous glucose monitoring get surprised because what you imagine that is healthy food for you uh, might not be so very often and, and can, can be vice versa. I, I think your website, so um, clear.bio, has very good blog uh, link, um, mm -hmm. and uh, I recommend people to, to um, take a look. Mm -hmm. And uh, many of the articles are fascinating. So it, for example, uh, compares um, banana. It told, tells about banana, if it's a really healthy food for you or not. And also I have heard about uh, so oatmeal and cookies. So, so for some people, Cookies can be healthier in a way that it yes. it it doesn't raise your blood glucose, and it is probably genetic. Some genetics playing a role, but and why maybe we don't know exactly why yet. But even without knowing it, getting the the information that oh oatmeal actually for me is a blood glucose raising factor mm. is such a powerful tool. I think because yeah. that as you that's exactly the idea of precision nutrition, it right? Is, it is. And of yeah. course, I'm happy you you have this uh, you have this little example because of course we need uh, we need your um, uh, how do you say that your uh, uh, your brains as well a bit of uh, um, I, I'm sorry the English uh, the English escaped me at the moment but uh, uh, we had somebody in the program that didn't spike at all on pizzas. Mm -hmm. and this was actually our Olympic sporter, and it, for her it was fantastic because she was on a a, a five month training program and she got from her dietitian her sports dietitian a very strict diet and of course pizza was not on it right <laughs> but apples no. were on uh, and yeah. she tested both of them so she tested apples and she tested pizza and actually she spiked too much on the apples which actually influenced her performance during the matches so mm -hmm. she stopped eating apples and the pizza wasn't too bad and she understood of course uh, that um uh, uh, that you can't eat pizza all the time. But if you're five months on a training program somewhere at 3,000 meters altitude, you know, you're quite happy that you can eat a pizza once, right? <laughs> so that's the, word, that's the word I was looking for, common sense, right? Yeah. We need your common sense. We will finalize the app in the course of next year with all the other uh, recommendations. So making sure that if you are on a protein-rich diet, that it's you're well balanced. Uh, making sure that all the micronutrients are in, etc. Uh, but for now, uh, we have these nice surprises. I have a very nice surprise, or, uh, or a nice, how you want to look at it. You know, uh, we have this alcohol-free beer, and I, I was quite a fan of alcohol-free beer until I find out I spike really hard on it. So I mm. should not drink alcohol-free beer, which is on itself good news, because that means that if I'm on beer, I should go to real beer, right? <laughs> But these are the these are the funny surprises. We have people spiking on on on, on coke free. Uh, co how do you say that? Uh, um, 
zero, uh, uh, Coke Zero. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, sugar and free. Sugar free Coke. Sugar free Coke. That's it. Yeah. And you are, um, and and that's and you're correct. You know, it is a combination of your microbiome and your genetics, and your lifestyle, and that's so unpredictable that these things can come out. So. Uh, that is indeed so you are just to, to clarify you are saying that you found out that alcohol free beer spikes your blood glucose but alcohol the beer with alcohol doesn't so as much no so that must be that must be some other than just a plain how much sugar or glucose your beer contains because alcohol, maybe alcohol, it's my gut yeah, microbiome alcohol, alcohol plays a trick with you so actually alcohol invalidates glucometry as a tool i'm saying it very hard but that's the case because if, um, if, yeah. if your body uh, digests alcohol, all other systems are shut down because it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, how do you say that? It's strange for your body. Uh, so it starts to, to, to digest it as a kind of poison, you know? First things first, get alcohol out. So nothing happens with all your digestive systems. Uh, so so uh, uh, clear, you, if, if you drink alcohol, you know, Clear doesn't say anything meaningful. It just shows you a flat line, which is which is obvious because your body just starts to digest the alcohol. That's by the way why most of the people, while they after they have a night out, they are quite hungry because nothing else is digested. You know, you just break down the alcohol, but you're still hungry because you know your, your body hasn't yeah. been fuel has been fueling up. So yeah, uh, alcohol is a, uh, yeah. is, a, is a trick play. If you if you're if you drink alcohol, uh, uh, then glucometry is not. Uh, and of course, you can drink a glass or two, you know, no problem. But uh, but that invalidates the measurement. And then when it's out of your system, then it starts measuring again. That's where the common sense um, yes. steps in, I Thank guess. Thank you very much. But that's a very yeah. interesting, fascinating information to know, actually, why yeah. why alcohol doesn't. Um, yeah, that's uh, really good information, actually. Um, I think I don't drink, but uh, for many listeners, I, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the la last question I, I really am um, fascinated, and I think that um, I have um, watched your previous panel interviews. Mm -hmm. You are with a couple of other people yeah. and from um, from. Um, yeah, um, I don't uh, recall, uh, but there were three, four other people, and yeah. uh, you are one of the panelists, and and great, uh, great panel panel discussion there. And um, um, you discussed a little bit about the future of data or precision nutrition, yep. and you already mentioned where Clear, your company, will be going to already next year. That's very exciting. And yep. in the very beginning of this interview, you even mentioned, you know, like uh, continuous blood. Uh, Glucose monitor coming to your watch um, anytime soon, I think. Um, but um, even beyond that, what is your vision? I mean, I think you are one of the most um, the most right people to ask this question, mm -hmm. given your very long uh, history uh, background in data science mm -hmm. or data business. Where do you see the, the this nutrition precision nutrition going, mm -hmm. or where do you want to see? Mm -hmm. What is your vision? I, before I started Clear, I was head of data at a fintech, um, uh, so a banking application. And I realized there, I think we can do that together right now, the two of us and the listeners, that if you think about 10 years ago, uh, you still got your, um, your transaction details of your bank account in a, on a paper form, if you want, by post, right? So every month you got you got your transaction details by post. You opened the envelope and saw what what happened that month. Within a decade, you know, people are checking in to their bank account on a daily level, if not more. So that's a change in I would say in society, right? No more paper transaction details, just uh, an app that tells you everything. So the next decade should be about health, right? Not be about wealth. It should be about health. Yeah. And that the, the 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 principle is the same. You know, I have withdrawals and I have deposits on my health account. You know what happens if you take two two sakes too much tonight, right? It's a withdrawal. You know also what happens if you uh, don't take white rice tonight. It's actually deposit on your uh, health account. You just want to know what the balance is, right? It's the same principle. You know what happens if you sleep well. You know what happens if you meditate. You know what happens if you run in the morning. You know what happens if you don't work 10 or 12 hour shifts, but but perhaps 
eight hours. You know what happens if you take a lunch break. Those are all deposits. I just want to know the balance. So my vision is that, that, that this decade will be about health. Right? And I think that during the, in the course of this decade, we will get those kind of apps that just tell you, listen, your balance is so much, so you're, you're in the zone, you're good, right? Or watch out, you know, you should take a bit of more rest or you should eat a bit better because the indicators are actually in red. I, I, that's it, Eva. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was just uh, I was just really impressed too, and that just just uh, your information like sinking in. And is it the watch fact form factor you you have on your mind, or do you like because there it's always like glasses, AI, AR, AR glasses. It's also, or is it? I'm just think I was just started thinking about form factor, but of course it's not mm -hmm. like techie talk, so it's not. Uh, but it's just my personal personal yeah, thought. Sure. That's fascinating yeah. to think how it's going to look. You already mentioned the watch, and I do agree that it's it's you know glucose monitoring thing, and it will be like concentrated on one device. Like yeah. it could could be smartphone or it could be watch um, or something else. Yeah. Um, it's but, going to. Um, it's, uh, if I think it's going to move away from the sensor itself. Uh, so the sensor mm. can do things, and now it's amazing. Uh, uh, yeah. I can eat this, and in two hours I can see if I should eat it again or never again. Right? It's amazing. Uh, but this is this is like the discovery of a new technology, like uh, which is called personal gl glucometry. It's nice, right? But we are talking ten years. So in ten years, you know, I know that a a car can drive itself. You know, I, the first time you're in a self-driving car, it's amazing. But once you've done it for ten years, you accept, right? So, so mm -hmm. you asked me to look beyond that, 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 that first amazing and that first discovery, and uh, and I, uh, so I, I think that the data will come from anywhere. It will come from either from a sensor. It can either become from a smartwatch, perhaps even something else, perhaps even my eye movements, right? My mm -hmm. eye movements correlate with my fatigue. Yeah, that's already in the car, right? Like yeah, we, indeed. our car has like indeed. when you are yeah fatigued, it warns you. Fatigue may relate to different aspects, but may also be a good correlation with glucose. I'm speculating, eh? This is not science, mm. but I'm speculating. Mm. So you and I still think of sensors, and sensors are going to be watches, but why? Eh? Perhaps it's body temperature. Perhaps it's my eye movements. Perhaps it's my mimics. You know, if I can see that you are tired, you know. Then my smartwatch could also see that you're tired, right? Yeah. So, so I think that uh, other uh, relations will be drawn, and but still, you know, data will come from everywhere. But the convenience has to be with you. So it has to be hyper convenient that you eat the right things, uh, and that 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 is uh, and that has to, you know, that can relate to. Uh, we're talking vision again. That can relate to all the five interventions that you have on your health. Because my vision is that it, that you will be helped by apps to manage your health account. So that means that an, an intervention is uh, eating, but the intervention is also working. An intervention is relaxation. An intervention is stress, sleep, lifestyle, medication, etc. So I, I think that there will be one place where you actually have your balance and where of, of, of your health and where uh, all these recommendations will come out for you. And some of them you may like, you know, if you get a recommendation to go to sleep, you may like it. Other recommendations go for meditation, you may not like. And we want to be just the easiest one to tell you what to eat or not. Yeah. Well, I'm so, again, thank you so much Anne, for our talk today. You um, too, Eva. Yes, hi. It was an honor, an honor to speak to you because you've interviewed many thought leaders in this area. So I'm, I'm happy that I'm the next in line. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I'm truly impressed by, so thank you so much for making health, um, you know, for us, easier for us. And I'm uh, very excited to try uh, your solution myself. Um, so I heard about the wait list from the earlier interview, but I hope that now it's more available. And it yes, sounds yes. so, so very excited to, um, to um, try it on. And um, yeah, so thanks again. And um, hopefully we connect again after yes. you maybe launch the global product next year. Eva, let's agree that. I will see you back soon in our program and I will help you find out uh, alternatives for white rice. 
or perhaps <laughs> some ingredients, right? That you can add. Uh, there are tricks, I, you know. So I hope so. I mean, I'm from Japan, so I have to say white rice is like you know, it just has to be like has to be white rice. But know, um, well, Anything my good cause rice. doesn't agree. <laughs> and Thank uh, you again. Yeah. so we agree on that. And I will also see you back once the uh, uh, the full international launch is there. Uh, including all the local databases and the local uh, 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 peer groups, etc. I will I will reconnect to you and um, and, and we can. Uh, uh, Very exciting. We can do that and uh, yeah. tell, it, tell it to your listeners. Thank you. Thank for you this. again. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please give us a thumb up and subscribe to the channel. The more subscribers we get, the more interesting and helpful contents we can create for you. Thank you.